like to do now is to introduce our guest speaker, and we're very thrilled to have Tim Knight. Tim is the CEO of Rapports LLC. He's the owner of the Sun, which is the owner of the Sun Times Media's 40 newspapers and the Chicago Reader, and is an investor in High School Cube and is publisher of the Chicago Sun Times. Tim is the past president and CEO of Newsday Media Group and publisher of Newsday. Tim led the process that resulted in the sale of Newsday Media Group by Tribune Company to Cablevision Systems Corporation for $650 million in 2008. <coughs> Prior to joining Newsday in 2003, Tim held a number of senior management positions at the Tribune Publishing Company and the Chicago Tribune Media Group. He was co-founder of and held senior management roles of Cla at Classified Ventures, LLC, the parent of Cars.com and Apartments.com, Prior to joining Classified Ventures in 1997, Tim served as Mergers and Acquisitions Counsel for this Tribune Company. It is with very great pleasure that we introduce Tim Knight. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here with all of you. Uh, Joanne did a nice job giving a little bit of my background. I'm going to speak a little bit about just kind of the evolving landscape of the media uh, business and, and how digital comes in. I've got a few of our colleagues from Rapports and the Pioneer Press. Chris Krug, who's the publisher, oversees all of the 32 Pioneer Press papers. Megan Spellman, who is here, who candles uh, Lake Force and Lake Bluff uh, sales for us. And Linda Blazer was here, Lin yep, Linda, who's uh, doing a terrific job covering the news uh, that's going on here. And I think this school strike, well, uh, not good for the students or the teachers will be good for Linda, keeping her very busy. So, uh, And we have the same thing going on downtown with the uh, Chicago public school strike. So, um, What I thought I'd spend time with you all today is sharing some insights that we're gathering in this very fast-moving uh, marketplace on how we view this trend, what, we, what, what is being called mobile, local, social, and how it impacts our business and probably is going to impact your business. And then describe a little bit about the changes going on at, across the Pioneer Press Papers as well as the other parts of the Sun-Times and our Rapports operation. So, so first, um, you all know it, consumer media behavior is changing. Uh, all of these people now are consuming news and information much differently than they have in the past. We no longer have the, the people in front of the television watching one of three or four channels uh, having a, na a newspaper delivered to their house. For the f uh, I've been in the business, as Joanne mentioned, for about 15 years in the print and digital media space. And the first 10 years, you could argue the fragmentation of consumers, consumers' options increased dramatically, and that was driven by television and primarily through cable channels. And then in the early part of 2000, of the 2000s, were these new web portals popping up and how people consumed information and the growth of Yahoo and AOL and then, and then now uh, Google and we'll talk about some of the other trends. But it just continues to become more and more dramatic. So the first 10 years, we call it, was kind of the advent of the cable fragmentation. And now it's really pure digital, the, the opportunities that people have now to get information and consume media is beyond imagination. Between e-books, smartphones, iPad and other tablets, the, the more the, la the, the laptop as opposed to the desktop, as well as just you know, consuming video on different devices too. So the, the trend that we've been studying, and, and we're not only one, a lot of folks are doing it, is this Mobile, local, social. Some people call it lomo so. Uh, we start with mobile because it's the emergence of the phones and the technology and the, and the internet capacity for those phones and the high-speed wireless, which is really changing how people and local businesses are engaging with each other and consuming information. And then we have the whole advent, which is, which is very new, which is the last three to four years of social of the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and the other different social media opportunities. So mobile. And here we're going to talk just about a handful of observations and trends that we see with respect to mobile. 
So the first is web-ready mobile devices. So moving from your BlackBerry, which is the older Blackberries, which were just communication tools, not really internet-abled, to web-ready mobile devices growing twice as fast as PCs. Second, by 2014, those devices are estimated to overtake web-ready or internet-ready PC devices. So by 2013, 1.7 billion in the world will be using mobile internet services. So mobile internet growing dramatically faster than desktop internet access ever did. We're seeing, and, and we'll talk about some trends, we're seeing this now with just people going to our websites from desktops or laptops and accessing it versus the, the mobile devices. It's a dramatically different trend in the last 24 months. Mobile data traffic expected to increase by more, more than 4,000% by 2014. So it's growing 1,000% annually that, uh, in this country. So this is one I find interesting. Americans spend an average of 2.7 hours on mobile internet each day. That's mobile internet, not desktop internet. So that's 2.7 hours a day using their mobile to access the internet. What's interesting is mobile brand exposure can be much more effective than other media messages. And so because people are spending so much time and they're looking at the device, we're discovering, and, and, and no one's figured this out, different ways that we can help communicate advertising messages on the devices. So there's a, there's a whole new world, and Jill, you might be seeing it too, but, but what we're finding is just people trying to figure out, and ad agencies uh, in Chicago and in New York haven't figured it out, how, what is the creative that you place on these devices that interact well with people? It, 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 is, a, it is a new frontier for the creative people and the, their marketing partners to try to figure out what does it look like, what does it have to do to get people to interact with it and understand your branding and marketing message. So this one is, is a very positive as you try to, to, to navigate this world, which is there's 60% more, so mobile internet users, so again, people who use their mobile devices to access the internet are 60% more likely to be open to mobile message, advertising messages than just pure data users. So there are people trying to figure out how you put marketing messages on the traditional, and we use BlackBerry because that's the, the kind of the, the gold standard for the traditional business. Um, you know, how do you put the message on there? We're on, the, uh, on Facebook and the other uh, internet applications. Messages are nice. This is a QR code. I don't know if people are familiar with those. So those are where you take your smartphone and you scan and it can launch you to a, a website or a marketing message. Those are becoming very popular as the bridge between uh, print or offline media to the internet. Facebook and Twitter. People are starting to use, and this is, this is the conundrum that Mark Zuckerberg has for Facebook and its stock price, right? Which is uh, the, the growth and the multiple billions of dollars of revenue that Facebook does generate has been traditionally desktop, traditional internet, going to facebook.com, where Facebook consumers now are using mobile devices and he's trying to figure out, like we all are, what is the marketing proposition to people that works well on the mobile device? And, and so, so as Facebook visits increase and Twitter in, uh, visits increase, creates opportunities. And then finally, it took uh, 20 years for the first billion, one billion mobile internet subscribers, and it'll take 40 months for us to get to the second billion people. So it just continues to increase dramatically. So, so what we're seeing is uh, since 08, as mobile internet devices, we are now at 10% of all internet traffic, is, uh, this, is, this is globally, is driven by mobile, the use of mobile devices. And, it's, and you can see the growth curve uh, over the last few years and it continues to incline well. We, we think a lot about smartphones but really it's the e-readers it's the e and the tablets that we're seeing. And in the next couple of slides, we'll talk about the proliferation of those. But right now, 29% of US adults own a tablet or an e-reader. So that's how they're consuming a variety of information. You've, you've probably seen what Amazon's doing with the, their new set of Kindles. Apple will come out next week with an announcement on the, 
the next Apple iPad device. The Nook is trying, you know, the Nook is the, going to be the savior, if there's a savior, for Barnes & Noble. And it has to do more than just be a book reader. So th those are trends that continue because those are devices people enjoy using. iPad growth is three times as fast as the iPhone. So the iPhone was the fastest growing device in history until the iPad came about. So this is quarters after launches of, as, as they grew. So iPad, and, and you might remember the old iPod, which is the nice little green line down here. You know, the iPod, we, we, we all had our shuffles and our regular iPods, and, and Steve, Steve uh, Jobs revolutionized how you got music, and he's, uh, he's done better than that. And then the interesting thing are apps. And, and candidly, we're continuing to try to figure out how best to use that. But what, what this shows is cumulative downloads of iTunes music versus apps. So again, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple revolutionized the music industry in the mid-2000s. That small yellow line, and that, that's iTunes songs downloaded, and apps downloaded is the uh, greater number. And so people continue to, A, create apps for all kinds of different things. Some are games. There's a lot of gaming that goes on. But we see a lot of news and information apps that are extremely popular as well. So we, we watch that trend. So all of this pulls together how mobile is completely revolutionizing the way people consume information. And then we think about the local aspect. And, and this isn't a trend just because it's what I do is I run local media operations. It's a trend that the venture capitalists in New York and San Francisco are looking at because they see how the devices and information is being delivered differently. So from a, an economic standpoint, so in 2010, online retail ad spending. So this shows it was a 13 point, so 13.5 billion in 2010. Online retail, so this is across any kind of device. Uh, online was 13, which represented about 15% of total local advertising. In 2015, it's expected to grow to 24 billion and be the dominant piece of the local ad spending. So local online will be 24 billion, surpassing newspaper advertising over the next three years. So this means that the huge opportunities for businesses like mine to say, oh, how do we help businesses like those that are members of the chamber think about communicating to these people that have these mobile devices and are using the internet to grow their businesses. And what this slide does, and it does it okay, is, is to show as the steps grow from 4.2 billion of online local to 24 billion between 05 and, and 2015, so over the, the next, the, that 10 year period, what, what is the stair steps, what's, what's accelerating the growth in those years is really the advent and the introduction of these mobile devices. So it's not, it's not that people are going to the web on their desktop or laptop, and that's what's driving it. It's that the introduction of these mobile devices continue to ratchet up the increase in the advertising spend on online local. So it's, it's understanding the mobile piece driving the local online ad spending. And so, so where do these dollars go? So this, this is using 2010 information that roughly half go to internet-only sites. Businesses built from the internet, about a quarter go to newspaper-related online businesses and the newspapers itself, and then the rest is fragmented along other traditional media. So that's mobile and its influence on local. Now we're going to talk about social, which is we all think about Zuckerberg and started, started out $100 billion, and now it's roughly $50 billion, but still it's a pretty good number. For Facebook, you have LinkedIn out there, and then you have just a, a continual, very fast-changing environment. That, that, those are five- and six-year-old companies that are introducing new ways for people to communicate. So U.S. social network users, so it it's continues to grow 165 million as in 2013 representing about 67% of all internet users are using a social media device at least one time a month. So people going to, somehow using a Facebook, Twitter, other social media account. Obviously highest penetrations of, amongst the younger people, although you do see 
over 50% of people 45 to 64 using mainly Facebook accounts to communicate with each other, smaller percent using LinkedIn from a business standpoint. So it's something we have to take seriously. You know, when, and I, I alluded to this, the, the pillars of the social media are, you know, the Facebook, the, so Facebook is, you're, you have friends, you have a lot of privacy, people share gamings, you update what you're doing on your day, share uh, pictures and do a lot of other things. Twitter is just really, you know, it's more one-way communications, people just sharing what they're, what they're doing, what they're reading, what they're listening to. It's a very good way to test how consumer, what consumers are doing. It's, it's, there are businesses popping up trying to aggregate Twitter feeds and seeing how people use Twitter and, and try to gather some insights for that. And then LinkedIn is a really a business proposition. It's, it's how business and people communicate with each other. You try to refer your friends, try to get people to say, I know you, can I network with you? Did you like the work I did with you? I was a good customer, a good employee, whatever else it is. I'm gonna play here with what my marketing guys created this for us for another purpose, and essentially social media 101 and how this all works. So the first is, so Twitter. What, so Twitter is, I'm eating a donut. You just tweet that out, okay? That's your tweet. Facebook is, I like donuts. You're sharing that with your friends. That's what you like. LinkedIn, my skills include donut eating. Foursquare, you know, with you, your friends, this is where I'm eating my donut. So you let the people who are part of your Foursquare family know that you're over at, a, at the donut shop. YouTube, here's a video of me eating my donut. <laughs> Instagram, here's a, a vintage photo of my donut. You know, Instagram, Zuckerberg paid a billion dollars for that little company. All it does is you take, a, it's, it's, it was a less than 24 month old company with seven employees and they have a, a software service where you take, a, you take a picture and you make it look like it's vintage. So they did well. Pinterest, another 24 month business and then here's the donut recipe. You share that with other people, you pin. This is my donut recipe. And then Google Plus. I'm a Google employee who eats donuts because no one's using Google Plus yet. So, so that, that just gives you a little bit of a flavor for how social media. We're very early in on how social is working, but it is something we all have to figure out because it is changing how people communicate with each other. So then we look at mobile, social, local, business momentum. How does that all come together to drive our businesses forward? So people using smartphones, so you know, this is 66% of the people have performed a mobile search after seeing an ad. So they see an ad and they do a search. And the ad can be on TV, you know, when they shop in the business, in a magazine or a poster and billboard. Interesting statistics here, and I know there's a lot of data, but it's more just looking at trends here. 94% of smartphone users have looked for local information, so that's what they're doing. And 90% of those people have taken action as they've looked it up. When they look for information, you know, they, they want to get 70%, you know, interact with the business, 66% visit a business they've looked up, 23% have told others, that's where the social aspect comes in, and 36% after they've done the search using a mobile device for local information have made a purchase. So th this, is, this example is with respect to restaurant and bars, so people will do a search for a restaurant or bar. One is to get maps and directions, that's the majority of it. But then they'll review the descriptions and reviews and 17% then will launch that into a call. So think of that, restaurant and bars I think is actually the easier example, but on other retail establishments or service businesses, there's ways to think about how you have a mobile, and we're trying to figure this out as well, a mobile application that is a launching pad that when someone comes to you it's easy for them to connect with you right away. And you know, one thing that, as from our company's perspective, that we're fortunate is that local websites, so local media websites, local newspaper websites, and primarily, uh, are still a great place for a launching pad for people to take off and, and do action. So uh, almost half of the people um, you know, took some action after looking at an ad on a local newspaper website, and then 24% are more likely to 
act on ads on a local newspaper website. Great opportunity for us, but then we figure out we need to figure out how that works with our mobile. So that's kind of these trends, and and I and it's a lot of data, but I wanted to share it because it's it's what is driving how businesses are looking to invest money on on different types of startups. What these startups are doing. There are smart people. I see business plans all the time. People call us because we, we do make investments in company and I have a background in helping start small businesses. So we're seeing a variety of business plans, very, very early stage people, very smart, coming out of Amazon, Facebook, Google, veterans of those businesses, trying to find ways to deal with mobile, local, social. A whole host of products and services that, that connect people and help businesses grow and help consumers navigate the, the internet better. So um, we, we see a lot of opportunity. I'm going to talk primarily about what we're doing with the Lake Forester and um, our, our Pioneer Press businesses. But you might have seen three weeks ago now, Chris, we launched the four weeks ago, the, uh, a redesigned Lake Forester and some Go Guides. I'm gonna, I'm gonna There's some outside there at the table for you. It's, it was six months of us listening to our customers. And so we, we did focus groups and surveys and talked to people. I knew when I bought the company that, because I live in Lake Forest, and I bought the, when I moved here two and a half years ago, I subscribed to Lake Forester, and it was an okay paper, but I also knew what was going on and thought it could be so much more. I, I, I know what local media can be. So based on, on the feedback, you know, we were able to add more color, add more photos, and this is an ongoing process. Use styling and layout that is, takes the best of the internet, put it on the paper, and then, then start developing a bridge because we know people are going to be going to the internet, whether it's desktop, laptop, or on a mobile device. We serve with our papers communities with families, and we need to make sure we're covering and making it easy for moms and dads to find out what to do with their kids. So we created this new separate go section I'll refer to in a, bit, a minute, and just kind of make it modern, make the navigation more interesting and more modern. So we have an insider's guide here. This is, a, this is essentially the index to the paper. We have icons over for community news. We have Chicago State and uh, Washington information, school information. This is all an ongoing process of how this information gets played in print, but we take in a very much a digital first philosophy. Think about the products the way that people are using digital, put it in print, but then we need to rebuild our digital assets as well, our digital properties which we're doing presently. The next is the, the Go Guide, which is our entertainment. So before all of this was put in a section called Diversions, kind of got buried in the middle of the paper. For markets like Lake Forest, or about half of the markets where we have a Pioneer Press newspaper, there's a separate pull-out Go Guide. And it's, the idea is it's a little magazine you can carry around. Uh, we have coding for whether things are for families, young kids, uh, toddlers, uh, you know, uh, other primary school kids all the way up. And so try to make it easy as a guide, much like the internet does, for you to navigate what the opportunities are in your community. Sports is huge. And as we think about digital, mobile coverage of sports, so that the next couple slides is we, we launched for this football season across all of the Sun-Times properties. So from here to Joliet, out to Aurora and Naperville, season pass, we cover all of the high school teams in our communities, and we have it online and in print. We purchased an interest in a company called High School Cube. So High School Cube does live video of schools, and we're, we're, we're growing that. And we have a, a platform by which we help schools go out and can tape not only sporting events, but band, commencement ceremonies, school plays, whatever it is, live. And then you can create small little replays or the best scenes from the, the school play, or if your son or daughter is the lead, you can have a cube for that son or daughter, and all of their, their best lines and best scenes can be put into it. So if they want to apply to a theater scholarship program, it's a nice opportunity to do it. Again, we're always we're trying to figure out how to use technology to do things differently. We launched Splash for us, lifestyle, fashion, society coverage, sometimes as well as in the Pioneer and Naperville markets is huge. We have, a, a, in I think this Thursday's Pioneer Press Papers, there's a separate pullout of our Splash publication, which is, was in Sunday Sun-Times, and then we launched a iPad app for this as well. Again, we're trying to figure out how to use technology. Where I want to go with the iPad app is using technology to show 
uh, if this is things we love, where you can go and buy that purse and be able to have that as a launching pad for buy a purse, you want to make a reservation in a restaurant, whatever it might be, can, it, can continue the interactivity. And we see opportunity to, to do that. The Lake Forester, we're, we're going on all platforms, obviously re, redoing the paper. We've done some cleaning up of the website. We're going to launch an iPad app, and we already have a mobile-enabled, phone-enabled website, but there's more opportunities for that. And how do we interact with people and use social, too? One of the ways that we're, we're really helping to figure this out, because mobile is so important, is we're able to create products for people where if they have a website but they don't know what to do with mobile, we have a partner. We're able to create very simple entry-level mobile websites for businesses to at least start inter interacting and engaging with their customers. It can be as simple as, here's what I do, here's how you get to my office. You, if you want to yeah, be on an email list and get deals, here's how you do it, and then the like. So, we're trying to make it easy using QR codes as a way to help launch this and get people to interact with the mobile sites for businesses in our communities. So what we see is this fast, you know, for us, very fast moving environment, very exciting, has its challenges, but it has a lot more opportunities than challenges. It's all about technology. It's the mobile, you know, how do we use mobile smartly? Uh, how do you make sure that we're engaging with businesses on a local basis and they're, they're uh, mobile enabled? And then all of us trying to figure out what social means. How do, you, how do you share information? How do you make sure that people are saying your business is a great business uh, on your Facebook account? I had a wonderful relationship there. That's the viral aspect of it. And people who do that well are seeing their business grow, are getting more stronger relationships with their customers and are growing their customer base. So, Thank you. Uh, <laughs>